have is the students will be using their iPads, but more importantly, they're learning about uh, uh, alternative energies um, as, as opposed to our current non-renewable energy sources that we use. And so they're doing uh, basically a, a research project through the iPads. And the way that they're presenting that is in a claim evidence reasoning format. So they make a claim basically saying which alternative energy is the best and then they have to supply evidence, advantages, disadvantages to that specific um, alternative energy. And they'll be using the iPads to not only, um, not only research it, but formulate a, uh, formulate a presentation on the iPads using, most of them are using Notability, it's an app on the iPads. And uh, then they will also be using the iPads to present the material. And um, some of those will be presented individually at the table, so students will work around to each of those um, locations just to kind of work around the room and see those as individual um, presentations and some of those we'll put through the uh, Apple TV to project onto the screen so that uh, maybe maybe we'll find one that's really exceptional and we'll put it up on the screen to discuss it and the students in, in making these are putting text they're putting images and they're adding their their uh, verbal explanations through recording onto this app so that they can um, demonstrate their knowledge of the content. There are not many skilled people who know how to do it, so we'd have to build on that, and the availability of suitable locations also may pose a problem. The installation costs are a bit high. Um, it requires the installation of power plants, and you have to get steam from deep within the earth, which requires lots of investment on time and um, a certified installer and skilled staff. By using more hydroelectric energy sources, we will lower the human impacts of, to our environment while making energy easier to access for nations around the world. In order to broaden the use of hydroelectricity, more of the government's money needs to be spent on the construction of dams. The dams would be an investment for our country. When we first started with this, you know, iPads were kind of a big deal and they still are. but. Our, our goal, I guess, was to implement new technologies into our high school. We see all these elementary schools like Lowell using technology, and we wanted to be able to um, take that same technology and apply it to our classroom so that when those students get to our high school, they're not like, oh, we're using the old laptops. And uh, it's been very beneficial. Our students really feel that um, they're on the edge of the technology rather than lagging behind. And uh, I would say that probably about 50% of my students, and these you know, AP students that are juniors and seniors in high school, about 50% of them had never used a tablet before. And so they really were, we had a learning curve at the beginning of the year, um, but they're really flourishing now and able to demonstrate their abilities in so many different areas by using the iPads. One of the advantages of them is, like I said, you can create, you can research, create, and present all in one. It's very quick. Um, they get onto the, the internet very rapidly, and uh, they can utilize their, these resources pretty, pretty rapidly so that they're able to um, demonstrate their knowledge a little bit faster than using the old PowerPoint that would have taken you forever to log on on a laptop, and then you have to set up the whole PowerPoint and do all these, and these apps are so specific to certain tasks that you want to do. Technology advances and I think advances in technology are going to continue so you're always going to have to keep using more technology and it's always going to keep costing you money but I think that's something that they should really budget for because it really helps you keep into date with everything. Teen like teenagers we grew up with technology so that's what we know about and then I, th I think since we have a better grasp on it then that'll further our education because we know how to use it and that'll just take it to the next level. I like the freedom that it gives us because it's it's not like a laptop. So, well, with the laptop, it takes forever to log on to them, and that's a it really like lessens the time that we have to use them. Both the iPads, you just pull them out, you log in like with your name, and then you get the internet and everything. And there are way, different ways to present it because sometimes with the laptop, there like I didn't like doing prezies or just powerpoints. I wanted to do more, and the iPad gives me that chance to do more. Our evidence 
is biomass, it refers to a living and recently dead biological matter that can be used as fuel or for industrial production. Um, biomass generates electricity through the burning of things such as trash, dead trees and branches, yard clippings, and um, biomass may also include biodegradable waste that can be burnt as fuel. Um, the United States currently produces about 0.5% of the U.S. electricity supply through biomass. Our advantages and disadvantages to biomass is that advantages are it is an exhaustible fuel source, it has a minimal environmental impact, it is very efficient, viable, and relatively clean burning, and is available throughout the world. Disadvantages would be contributes to global warming. If directly burnt, they particulate it with pollution. It's an expensive source, and there's most likely a net loss of energy. Energy must be put in the ground. Well, yes, you have to grow plants in order to burn biomass. <clears throat> the safety of biomass is that it can ruin water quality with a bunch of nitrates released into it through the process of runoff to nearby water. Um, biomass can be, we compared it to wind energy because they are both alternative energy sources that produce electricity and they are both very expensive. Um, on the other hand, wind ener energy can only be produced when the wind is blowing and it makes a lot of noise which in return can destroy the environment or harm it. Um, but an advantage of wind turbines are that they, you have the ability to lock and unlock them, which means that a disadvantage of that is that you cannot store any of the energy produced from them. So you have to unlock them when the energy is needed. Um, and then for the development of biomass energy, you must need the resources, the correct technology, and the marketing to produce it. Here we have some pictures down here. Some types of examples of biomass uh, on the left and the right. What we've found is that the students seem much more engaged in their presentations. Um, when we had to do, like many times we would jigsaw um, chapters and, and we jigsaw content so that we could cover vast content in a quicker time. Um, just in terms of a survey of it before we investigated it more or as a review. And one of the things that we found is that um, often we're putting those on whiteboards. You know, kids are writing with whiteboard markers on whiteboards and, and they're just throwing stuff up there and it, it's their writing, it's their drawings. And now what I've found is, and what the students have discovered, is that they're able to really elaborate on the content. And we actually use it more as a, a learning process than an um, introductory um, survey or even a review. Now it's really, let's engage in this uh, content because it allows them to present it in a way that they feel they have ownership of it much more because you can see real world situations. And that's one of the things that we've done whenever we do a lab now, we'll pull out the iPads. And so we've done this lab, say, on ecosystems. And what I always ask them is, give me a real world situation. And then they have to do a presentation on that. And that's really allowed them to go in more depth into the class um, content. But the challenge of that is sometimes it does slow us down a little bit, but I think we're more engaged in the content and we're gaining the depth um, with that specific topic that we're covering. Um, but going back to the original question, I think that um, when the students need to do things quickly, they're able to do that as well because they know how to do it. There's an app that's specifically for you know, going and presenting content and there's the apps for going to specific locations instead of having to type in uh, URLs and that type of thing. It's natural for me. I'm pretty sure it's natural for most kids. I mean most kids now have Apple, Appleware stuff and like a lot of kids have iPads at their house. So I think it was just 
almost just natural just to take an iPad for learning. You're physically touching, like you're physically touching the screen, you're like, and you're reading it still. I think that it helps engage a little more because, and also you can pull up all these images and stuff through the iPad, so you get a nice visual too. We drove the class with questions, a lot of questioning, and we'd put the questions on the board, and that would stimulate these the students to go and investigate the question, which would give us some answers, but not all the answers, which would drive more questions, which would stimulate us to go out and investigate more. And you know, it's a great way of learning. And the kids were involved and interactive. And you know, we we use Edmodo as one of our apps, and the students post to Edmodo questions, and so they're able to collaborate and communicate with each other through questioning and responding to each other. Um, they also post some of their assignments through Edmodo and their labs, and so I'm able to respond to them with real-time feedback. As I read that lab, I can respond and say, you know, um, your, your claim is, is accurate, uh, you're lacking in your evidence for your claim. Can you provide me with a little bit more evidence and reasoning as to why you, why you believe that's the answer for this lab question? And, uh, and that's almost immediate. If, and the, the students have their e emails linked to Edmodo. And so when I put something on Edmodo, they get the email of what the assignment is or what my reply is to their assignment. And so it's real time, it's accurate. It's allowed us to go into uh, a lab knowing that we're gonna walk away with this, not, with, not just with this, um, understanding of how how the world works through um, through hands-on activity but also like I've said to apply it to the real world situation so you know if we're talking about water quality we we went out and did a lab where we investigated the Big Sioux River and we took the took the parameters of the Big Sioux River in terms of like dissolved oxygen nitrates phosphates ammonia um, bacterial counts. We did all that and um, from year to year the Big Sioux River may be clean or it may be very um, unhealthy um, just based on what's been going into it. And the students don't necessarily know that. All they know is what their parameters are in their test. And my question for them is you know, make a claim on is the Big Sioux River healthy? Well what do they have to base that on? And so what the, what the iPads and the technology has allowed us to do is to go out and research that immediately as we're looking at our data. And you know, you can do that with computers too. But like I said before, you can put this right up onto the screen so a student finds something that's very relevant, they can post it to Edmodo or they can put it up on the screen. Um, we, we use Google Docs as well. And um, you know, I know you can do that with other devices as well, but it's just the speed at which you can do these um, applications that allow you to be successful. I gave a survey um, not too long ago to the students just asking them their feelings about it. And you know, it's on a scale of one to five, you know, how engaged do you feel in the classroom as a result of the iPads? Um, and what did they have to compare it to? Um, previous classroom experiences. That's really all that they had to compare it to. But um, very engaged. You know, above four, it, you know, five being high, above four in every category that I asked them. Uh, students felt more engaged. Students felt more ownership because they had the technology in front of them. They were able to use it. Um, they felt ownership of the presentations. They felt a need to do better on their presentations. Um, they appreciated the other students' work more. Um, and when, when we got to the end, I gave them some time or just a comment. And so many of them said, we need to continue to develop and be on the edge of the technology curve rather than behind it. Um, because we're going to be going to college and they're going to expect us to have those abilities. And in four or five years, I'm going to have a job somewhere and I'm going to have to know how to use this technology. 
So if we're educating and preparing students to succeed in the changing world, we have to be on top of the changing technology all the time as well. And one of those things is that, you know, as technology um, changes, uh, it's very difficult to keep up. We've, we've known that for years that, you know, when we buy laptops, two years they're, they're old. And uh, we have some old laptops and, you know, our iPads are at two years old now. Uh, but the nice thing about iPads is the software updates so nice because it's apps. And if you keep it clean, it pretty much, in terms of what's in, embedded in it and what you're actually using versus what you're not, and you keep those, you don't fill it up with apps that you don't really use, they'll last for quite a while. And that's the nice thing about iPads and this technology. Definitely during like some of the movies we watch, we'll watch movies and use Edmodo and kind of like comment, because that's how we're used to like interacting with people. It's all social media and that you could have that social media in school is kind of, teachers taking advantage of it is really smart because that's what kids are used to, that's what kids like. Like you go around school, look at people's phones in the hallway, they're all on Twitter. Like, it's just how it is. That's how we communicate. 